Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It's April the 11th, day 101. And we're uh, on 1 Samuel 14, 24 through 46. This would have been part of your reading today. And so let me read a couple of verses and, um, well, maybe six or seven verses and we'll have a conversation about it. It says, Now the Israelites were in distress that day because Saul had bound the people under an oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food before evening comes, before I have avenged myself on my enemies. So none of the troops tasted food. The entire army entered the woods, and there was honey on the ground. When they went into the woods, they saw the honey oozing out, yet no one put his hand to his mouth, because they feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard that his father had bound the people with the oath, so he reached out with the end of his staff that was in his hand and dipped it in the honeycomb. He raised his hand to his mouth, and his eyes brightened. Then one of the soldiers told him, Your father bound the army under a strict oath, saying, Cursed be anyone who eats food today. That is why the men are faint. Jonathan said, My father has made trouble for the country. See, my, see how my eyes brighten when I tasted a little of this honey. How much better would it have been if the men had eaten today some of the plunder they took from the enemies? Would not the slaughter of the Philistines have been even greater. So Saul's chasing the Philistines. He's chasing his enemies. He's wanting to win the battle. And in in his haste to be spiritual, I don't know, to, to prove a point, mm. he says, we're not eating anything until, you know, they're, they're defeated. Um, it, it was a, it was a terrible promise. I mean, it's clearly a, it's a, it's a bad idea. Um, what things should we consider before we make an oath or a promise? What things mm. should we take into consideration before we say, this is what we're going to do? I think what the effects are going to be, which he obviously hadn't thought about. Right. It's almost like he was assuming it was going to be a quick victory. Yeah, I think you need to look at the bigger picture uh, and perhaps get a little input from the Lord. You know, is this... Is this Am I thinking in the right direction? It's interesting to me, he makes this um, proclamation and put this thing in place. And you back up a few verses, it was, it was Jonathan, his son, who initiated this battle to start with, then all of a sudden got this momentum going. He jumps on the bandwagon, and in the middle of that, he just makes this foolish uh, requirement out of them. Yeah, and apparently doesn't tell everybody. Mm -hmm. At least his son doesn't know. You know? Right, he hasn't heard. And, um, you know, I, I think about just the simple act of fasting, for example. Um, I try to be intentional about fasting, but there are times that I won't fast unless I, like, specifically feel impressed by God like this sure. is the time so yeah. like um, Tuesdays would not be a day I would fast typically you know right now we're we're often recording podcasts right. on Tuesday morning then we have staff meeting and we eat together mm -hmm. you know and I don't want to be sitting at the end of the table everybody asking if you're sick you're okay yeah you're yeah, yeah. Like, no I'm more spiritual yeah, than right. like yeah. that, it's, it's a real yeah. it's a real <clears throat> social issue and, and, and here he it appears he's trying to to me, I, I get the, this feeling that he's being super spiritual. You know, he's he's aloof. You know, we we got this. You know, and those are dangerous, dangerous promises to make. So, the follow up to that is, what are some bad promises that we can make that are hard to live up to? Mm. I think you can easily make those types of things with your kids. You know, like this something happens and. You're going to set this new rule. And you can't drive for six months. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, something. Yeah, I hear people tell their kids they're grounded for months or something. Right. I'm like, that's not, it's probably not going to work out. Yeah, I, I remember one occasion um, when our kids were in high school and that very issue and, and something transpired. It, it wasn't some huge thing, but it was enough that kind of got me stirred up a little bit. And my first response was, I said to my wife, I said, they're not going to drive for, for the rest of the month. And she said, are you crazy? She said, that means that I got to do it. I got to take on all the extra work. And it's kind of like the story right here. 
And once she said that, and I had time to think it through, I mean, I was like, okay, we need to come up with a different yeah, point. We're the ones being punished. We're going to suffer. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes we don't realize that. I think parenting is a great place to see it. You know, with little kids, they, we, you can't have your tablet for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we're trying to work, and mm -hmm. they're disrupting our work because they're being loud and they're not entertained about a babysitter tablet, you know, mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, you can have it back, you know, and it sends, it does send a bad message. So Jonathan though had not heard mm -hmm. in terms of oaths or promises or rules or regulations or laws of God or expectations from his word is ignorance and excuse. Well, in this case, he didn't know any better. Yeah, well, <clears throat> your question was, I think, it, from, the, from the laws of God. This was from Saul. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and so, therefore, the answer would be no. I, I don't think he was under any commitment or obligation. Uh, if it's something related directly to the Word of God, uh, I don't think ignorance is an excuse, but it is dealt with differently. We see that throughout Scripture. And then once you come to the knowledge of the truth, then the accountability goes mm -hmm. way up at that point. It's also interesting that's his father and he didn't know it just makes you wonder well was so, he standing in front of a crowd he didn't happen to be around right you know was it off the cuff i don't know the the the, the question i would ask is saul clearly has a jealousy problem mm -hmm. severe yeah extreme mm -hmm. you know we, we'll talk about that you know where david is concerned uh, mostly that's where we see it come out it's not explicit here that this would have been the problem. But, Jay, you mentioned that Jonathan was the one that started this mm -hmm. victory, and they're winning. And clearly Jonathan's going to get some of that credit, you know, that sure. that, that warrior credit. Um, is, is Saul setting him up to fail, do you think? Or, or is he looking for some way for it? Oh, it was my oath. It was my promise to God. It was the fact that I said we weren't fasting that is the reason why we won the victory. I, I don't, I'm just curious. It's pure speculation. I think all those things come into play, but I do think the jealousy thing is kicking in here. Um, he, Jonathan clearly initiated and begun this, this fight, uh, and then it, it increased in momentum. And then by the time Saul and his folks hear about it and they realize what's going on, he wants to jump in in the middle and, and get the credit. And so now... He's like, oh, by the way, I'm the king, and so this is what I say, and uh, we're soon going to finish this thing off, and, and I'm going to be the victor out of this. And I do think there's a huge part of jealousy playing in this, um, and there's obviously division. Even though they have fought side by side, uh, they will eventually die side by side. Uh, there's obviously division between Saul and even his own sons because of his internal problems that Saul has. So it says that they, that they struck down the Philistines, they pounced on the plunder, taking sheep, cattle, calves, they butchered them on the ground and they ate them together with the blood. Then someone said, look, the men are sinning against the Lord by eating, eating meat that has blood in it. So by the time they win, they're so hungry that they, they can't wait. Eat they, some raw stuff. Right. Well, it's not, I, you know, whether it's raw or not, you know, they may be roasting it without draining the blood. That was one of the commandments. Right. You know, that's that seems to be a clear yeah. commandment. Mm -hmm. Even in the New Testament, that's a strange thing. That's a strange commandment that finds itself over in um, somewhere like Acts chapter 15 where they have Gentiles that are coming and they ask them, you know, what, what what are we going to command them? And they, they said, you know, we're not going to put on them any more than the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. And one of the things that it was revealed to them was they couldn't eat animals with blood in it. Mm -hmm. um, and which was, a, you know, that was a command. That's an unusual command to get carried over to the New Testament. Yeah. And so they're sinning here, but it, isn't Saul responsible here because he's allowed them to get so hungry that man, when they finally got some meat to eat, they're just, they don't really care how it's prepared. Absolutely. He, he literally created a situation where he drove them to a poor decision. Now, poor decisions are our responsibility, but I think back my own life, I'm responsible for some bad decisions that some people made because I drove them to that mm -hmm. place. Now, yeah. Sure. You, you see this any particular way? I mean, I think that he set them up 
to fail right. in a way, not only in the fight that they were in, but also then they were so hungry. They're like, we're not going to wait to do what we're supposed to do. They were just driven by hunger, I think. Yeah, yeah and the, big, the bigger thing here, if Saul had truly been a leader at this point, he could have stepped back and said, you know what, that probably wasn't the best decision. Uh, how can we resolve this and what can we yeah. do to best serve you? And sometimes that's the best decision is to acknowledge that we we acted too hastily you know yeah. we said something or did something we shouldn't have and now we want to change that course and get input from folks and, and go back in a different direction and he could have easily done that but he like us oftentimes once he made that decision he was just going to stick to it oh yeah he's already you know. well you know yes i i i think i see times in parenting where parents make choices and they're either too hard or or, or they're they're not strict enough mm -hmm. you know and then there's this response by a child either in rebellion or in continuation whichever the case may be and the parent tries to place all the burden on the child when the parent had some Im implication that sure. see it in husband and wife relationships where one acts in a particular way and, and and then there's this result and sometimes the other result is horrible you know and they go oh you're you're the fault of it but there's an other side to that story, yeah, and we absolutely. don't like to talk about it. And, and and they're clearly sinning. Okay, that there's no question about that. At least based on on the scriptural context. But Saul has to carry some burden, you know, that he hasn't driven onto this, and I'm not sure that he does. And so, um, it says that Saul's trying to decide. Okay, are we moving forward or not? You know, shall I continue to pursue the Philistines? Um, and God, he, he seeks um, an answer from God, and God doesn't answer that day. And so he, he comes back asking for an answer, and he doesn't. So he clearly feels like something is wrong. And so he says, okay, y'all stand over here, and we're going to stand over here. Because honestly, it says, it, it, when I read this, it says, Saul said to the Israelites, you stand over there, and I and Jonathan and my son will stand over here. He clearly thinks it's them. Mm. Right, he has no clue he that it's, it it's Jonathan, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it says then he prayed to the Lord. Why have he answered him? Is it the fault of me or my son Jonathan? And he responds with the Urim and Thummim, you know, the the pieces in the breastplate, and and um, it, it says that that Jonathan was the one taken. And he finally confesses, you know, what he's done. The, the, here, here's kind of how I want to ask this. God wouldn't let them um, move forward until they had dealt with this for some reason. And, and I don't know who he's pointing out. Is he pointing out the fact that Jonathan broke the oath or Saul made a stupid oath? You know, it doesn't, you know, it, 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 the finger gets pointed at Jonathan. But... Why do we have to deal with some things before we can move on? Like, it, th does that make sense? Why Why is it that we can't move forward to the next thing God wants until we deal with, with some situations that we have going on right now? I think it's interesting that um, Jonathan admitted what he had done, whereas Saul did not. Yeah, that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that has a lot to do with what, the question that you're asking that God wants us to be able to take responsibility for it and deal with it instead of sweeping it under the rug or acting like it didn't happen yeah. and pretending that we can move forward without any consequence and that it had affected all this, you know, so many people. Right. Yeah, there are some things I think of such significance in character, flaws, issues, challenges in our life that God won't let us move forward. Mm -hmm until we come to a realization this is an issue that needs to be dealt with mm -hmm. you know how are you going to lead in the future if, if you can't work with what the problem is that's been identified right now you know and in this proclamation Saul's not done with just spitting out stuff that he you know that really doesn't make sense when you analyze it you know he, he said to Jonathan he said you're gonna die right and, and, and he says May God strike me and even kill me if you don't die for this. And he's making another declaration <laughs> that was saying, you're going to die today and now for this, and, and, and I'm so serious about this. If it don't, then I'm going to die. And he's like, 
really. He's making himself look really cool. He is. And it's one of those situations, again, where he dug in his heels, and rather than dealing with it, acknowledging it, and, and trying to find a solution, he, it just gets worse and worse. Yeah, so the men stopped him from killing Jonathan. They sure did. They rescued they, him. They're like, you know, should Jonathan die, he has brought about this great deliverance of Israel, which probably really rubbed Saul the wrong way, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he hated that. It says, as surely as the Lord lives, not a hair on his head will fall to the ground, for he did this today with God's help. So they rescued um, Jonathan, and he was not put to death. It says, then Saul stopped pursuing the Philistines, and they withdrew to their own land. So the question I have here about this, because this is, um, this, this one's really challenged me a little bit. Um, God clearly is the one that singled out Jonathan. Mm -hmm. You know, because they're following the process of Urim and Thummim, or whatever how you pronounce it. Yeah. You know, it's God that singles him out, and he makes this oath to kill him. Was he being disobedient to kill him, or was he being disobedient not to kill him? Which, which, which one? Because it can't be both. <laughs> which is it? Well, I, I think it, the identification part was was the part that God was playing the role in. To bring about accountability, you made the point, Jonathan. Once he realized what was going on, he said, "Yeah, I, I did that. This is what happened." You know, because he did it with without prior knowledge. Saul was the one who never uh, gave in or acknowledged that he had a, a role to play in it. And I think part of the process was for us to have this story so that we could see the contrast in it. That just identifying who did what is not always the the answer we're looking for. Yeah. Well, Jonathan even says, "I ate the honey. I must die." I mean, he he understood the consequences of breaking the, oath. the, the yeah the, the king's command. That's exactly right. Um, even though he he did it out of ignorance, um, and he did it out of you know good intent. Yeah. So as a follow up, the men saved him in spite of his sin. And I don't know. I don't know exactly how to ask this. In terms of relationships, should we lean on the fact that sometimes the good outweighs the bad? Should we say he, he did this great thing? We're going to overlook this small thing. Isn't that what's going on? Like he won this victory for us. We're going to overlook the fact that he sinned and they rescued him instead of letting him die. Um, don't you think that they also? probably deep inside had more respect sure. for Jonathan than they did for Saul and that they knew in a lot of ways he was their saving grace. Yeah. Because he certainly seems to be a much more logical thinker. Well, spiritual. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, by the time you get to this point, Saul is well on his way to falling off the wagon, yeah. you know. Um, so His insecurities are starting to eat yeah. him alive. Yeah, that's right. Kill him, mm -hmm. almost. Jay, you got any other... Uh, just one last comment out of verse 30 uh, where, where Jonathan makes this, this point. He said, if the men had been allowed to eat, think how many more Philistines would have been killed. Mm -hmm. He's saying as great as this victory was and you know we got this thing started and, and we had a route and, and, and a lot of them got away. He said, think how much more could have been accomplished mm -hmm. if this thing had been thought, thought, thought through and, and some common sense were used and we came to a different conclusion what our future would look like. And I think it points out the importance of every decision we make, good, bad, or indifferent, has consequences on our future. That's right. It makes it even better or worse. Yes. Yeah. Good. Jay, you want to close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, we thank you uh, for the truth of your word and reminding us uh, that sometimes we make rash decisions or rash vows or promises. They get us in a bind, and when we do that outside of your will and your leading and your time, and give us the courage and strength uh, not only to recognize it, but to make things right, to acknowledge it, take responsibility, and to seek wise counsel, and then move forward according to your plan, purpose. Uh, remind us every day that every choice, every decision we make has an impact on our future and those around us, and may those choices and decisions be led by your Spirit for the best results. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.